Hi, my name is Nomalanga Saudi Moses with Healthy Black Woman, and I'm here with my good friend Shaquita Graham from Atteco.com. How are you doing today, Shaquita? I'm doing great, Noma. I'm doing really great. MLK Day. How are you? I'm not complaining at all. I'm doing great. Um, but, you know, we were having a quick uh, discussion about an article that's up at um, theblackhomeschool.com, and the title of it is Gay Lesbian School Opening in Atlanta to Enroll Kids as Young as Five Years Old. So I just want to say the first thing that's interesting to both of us is we're both homeschool moms, um, so we're very interested in what happens in the school system, and obviously um, our decision was to pull our kids out of the public school system or the school system altogether and homeschool them because we felt that that's a better environment for them. So, of course, this was an interesting story uh, for both of us. Um, the school is called the Pride School. I'm just looking at my notes here. The Pride School in Atlanta. And... Um, Again, it's supposed to enroll kids as young as five years old. And um, one of the things that's mentioned in the article, I'm just going to pull it up, but one of the things that's mentioned in the article is that uh, part of the reason why it was the founder of the school felt that it was important to open such a school is, and I quote, bullying in public schools has been a serious issue for many years. However, in recent years, the bullying has become more focused on LGBT uh, teens more than ever before. Um, and it gets to a point where they're afraid to go to school and so on. Um, and while I can kind of understand the teen part, I'm still questioning the five-year-old part. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, a white man opening up a K through 12 gay school in a church in Atlanta, with a lot of black faces in the advertising, I mean, that is not just a can of worm, worms. That's like a barrel of snakes. I mean, there is so much to unpack on this. And I just personally feel like when you're dealing with human sexuality and children and even adults, you have to consider so many levels like biochemistry, psychology, sociology, and that's a lot to address in this video. People like Dr. Layla Africa, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, Dr. Amos Wilson, they address these things and they are experts. But for me, I am extremely uncomfortable with any institution being char in charge of my child's education, and that's why I homeschool. So, yeah, I think that there's a major issue with an institution being in charge of a child's, you know, it's, it's, it's really focusing a lot on a child's sexuality. And I have a big problem with that, especially when it's not being tackled from the perspective of my own culture. Right. Um, well, you know, I have a slightly different perspective on it. I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I chose to and why a lot of black parents are increasingly choosing to remove their kids from schools is that um, the schools don't cater as well to black kids as they do to white kids. Uh, my experience, at least here in the Boston area, is when you put your kid in public schools, um, they tend to be a minority to the point where they may be the only black kid in their class. So they're instantly different from the day they walk onto the grounds or the, the day they walk onto the class, into the classroom. Um, and again, I've shared my personal experience uh, with my own kids over and over. And one of the reasons was I noticed that there was an assumption of a lack of ability just because the kid was different. Um, so I understand that perspective. I'm just confused about how a five-year-old can be gay. I'm confused about how a five-year-old can know or even process uh, sexuality and that they're different in their sexuality. Um, you know, I'm not an expert in this area, but to me, that's very, com that's very confusing. Um, and I'm starting to wonder if this is not a thought that is being put in the child's mind rather than the child having the experience themselves. And if they go to a school which kind of slants to this thought that, you know, you're different because of your sexuality, is that child then different because of their sexuality or has it been suggested to them that they're different? 
Um, the same thing applies to the parents. Um, I, I'm, I'm questioning, is it that the parents are from the LGBT community and so choose to put their child in a school this way because they don't want to be discriminated against? Or is it actually about the child? So I, I'm, I know I'm asking more questions that I'm answering, but those are my very, very, I feel, valid questions. Um, this morning I watched The View and they were talking about um, the little girl uh, from Louisiana who was the very first girl to uh, go into a segregated school. Can you remember her name? Uh, Ruby. Yes. Um, I can't remember her I last can't remember name. The last name. Yeah, but um, I, 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 I was, I, I actually posted something on Facebook and I said if I was a parent, of that child, or as a parent, I feel like that child should never have been put in that position at all. That she was six years old. That's too much for a child to bear. Um, and I, I don't think, I think that it was important that, um, th that people stand up to the, to the education system as it was at the time, but I really feel like the burden shouldn't have been put on a six year old child. Um, and, that's how I feel about this, too. I feel like they're putting on little children what should be adult issues. What do you think? Well, um, from what I read in the article, the founder of the school is a white man who is identifies as transgender, and he sees the school as a haven, not just for those who are um, gay as children, but as teachers, for teachers who right. identify as transgender. So that kind of addresses the idea of um, people influencing the psychology and the sociology of the child. Um, and that is where I have, I take a lot of issue with that because I don't feel, I feel like in our community it's very important for us to take ownership of everything from traditional education, sex curriculum, history curriculum, and it needs to be addressed from an African perspective. And I don't know that a transgender white male can address anything about my black male child in a way that I would see appropriate. I mean, when you bring up the young woman who integrated the school system, first name being Ruby, the children that she was having to uh, be defended, um, had to, to defend herself against are children who are impacted by the psychology of their parents and the right. sociology of their parents. And then they were the weapon that wield that psychology and that sociology onto that little child. So that's the same thing in this scenario. When you're talking about human sexuality, there are many things that affect that, impact that, and um, influence that. So I don't think that this institution is the right place for it to be addressed. And I think that um, in the black community, we have to be very careful about where, what causes we lend our image to, because there's been a long history of people utilizing our image and what they would try to make it mean for certain causes. Again, this is a church. There's a lot of issues that are intersecting here. I mean, you're talking about homosexuality, transgender adults and children, and there's just a lot. And I'm, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with it. I think that we have to continue to be and even be more so protective of our children and our image. You have attacks from every direction. You have this new book, The Birthday Cake for George Washington or something like that, depicting slaves as happy distorting the, the story that this, this book was about. Then you have history books from, you know, um, known um, authors and publishers where they depict stolen, terrorized Africans as migrant workers. Then you have the media depicting a little boy with a toy gun as a, a gun-toting, irresponsible suspect in a an uh, open carry state. So we have to be careful. And right now, I just think this could be dangerous. Okay. Um, and and I, I, I agree. I hear all your points. Um, my question then is, okay, so f for me, the, the part that I found outrageous or the most outrageous was they're talking about kids as young as five years old. Um, but the article mentions teens who, you know, are becoming more aware of themselves and do to some degree have more of a, a solid voice about who they are and who they want to be. Um, and they may feel like they're uncomfortable in a, a general a general school system and want a more 
a school system that's more understanding of their experience. So does your view change a little bit if we're talking about teenagers or do you think that this applies across the board? Well, I think that, you know, it's important for teenagers to have a safe space to address their issues, but I don't know if this is that space. Um, we have a public school system and a private school system that is supposed to be a safe space for everybody. And I think that if there's an issue with that, we should take that up with that school system. Um, when it comes to sexuality, because there are so many forces involved, even on an adult level with sexuality, people are being, you know, they're being dominated and used in a very negative way based on sexuality. So even an impressionable teen, even though they're a teen, I don't know if I would trust my teenager to be um, influenced by a transgender white male. I, my black teen to be influenced by a transgender black male about sexual issues. I think they're still too... Right, white male. Um, I think they're still too impressionable. Sexuality is something that is a um, very important issue, and I think that me, personally, I wouldn't leave that up to any institution to, to teach my child that. So even if they're a teenager, I think it's – I don't like the idea, personally. Okay. But, again, people can do what they want to do. And I think in our community, we just need to figure out what we need to do. Okay. I, I think that, you know, we should have our own types of schools and things like that. So I can't say that it's wrong for them to determine, hey, we need this school, because – if you don't like what's happening in the environment that you're in, I am all for empowering yourself to do something different. I just personally wouldn't involve my child. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I have the same view in the sense that I feel like if you think that your child, I strongly feel that if you think your child is not in a good situation, whether it's in school or anywhere else, the onus is on you to change that environment, take charge of it, and make sure that your child is getting exactly what you think they should get based on the values that you have and the values that you want to instill in your child. So um, mm -hmm. with that said, um, I think um, this, is a, this is an interesting topic because it does, yes. it does what a lot of what I see happen a lot in the media is it always, the, well, not always, but it, there's a tendency to parallel the black experience with other experiences. So I did see the parallel in the sense that, you know, my reason is clear for taking my kid out of uh, public school was I felt like my child shouldn't be treated differently because they are different. And the main difference was that there were a black kid in a sea of um, among white kids. That was very clear. And I decided that I didn't want that for my kid. So now you have the, another narrative which tries to parallel this and say, well, my kid is gay and they're being treated badly because they're gay. So I'm going to take them to another environment. So, you know, we see that a lot where the people draw parallels to the black experience and then they're able to kind of go along with it and ride that wave um, I, and I'm with you in the sense that uh, every parent needs to do what they feel is best for their kid um, my choice is homeschooling your choice is homeschooling and so be it um, I'll let you have the last word before we close out well and another thing is that what happens is you take something like we're opening a gay pride school in Atlanta and and as a, a person in the black community, to me, you always have to be suspicious of motives that utilize our image in our children, because oftentimes there's a political agenda, there is an agenda related to propaganda, so that's what really makes me uncomfortable. I mean, this, you know, I don't know what the purposes and the intentions really are of the people who are starting this. And again, that's been the situation with every institution that involves black people. I, too, had a similar uh, scenario with my children being in any school, whether it was dominated by black people, white people, private school, Christian school. I did not feel like you know, I felt like we were still suffering from institutional violence. So with that being the case and the experience oftentimes in the black community, I, I wouldn't trust anything like this. And I don't trust it in the black community with black faces. I don't trust these people. Okay, there you have it. Um, I just want to let our viewers know that this is a segment of your black women, where black women keep it real, and I believe that we do that. Um, this is Shaquita Graham.
the founder of atechco.com. And um, just to elaborate a little bit on what atechco.com is, um, you know, Shaquita and I have had conversations about what she does at atechco.com, and that was one of my interests in getting to know her, um, is atechco.com is a platform that she created where parents can actually um, you know, sign up and the kids can learn online. And then feel free to jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and one of the things that I liked about atechco.com is when I log in, I see a lot of images of little brown kids. So um, definitely Shaquita has earned her right to have a say-so about uh, black kids and their education and their experience. My name is Noma Langham Sally Moses. I am also the founder of theblackhomeschool.com. And again, this has been a segment of Your Black Women, where black women keep it real. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you, Shaquita.